some properties that that some of our investors that we work with, Larry works with, or I work with, um, this might work really well for, especially those that maybe invest in single family homes, um, that they can do these conversions, um, hopefully permitted, sometimes unpermitted, not that that matters to you probably, but- uh, It does, it does. We, we want them to permit the work. Sure, that's always yeah. a best practice. So uh, yeah. with that being said, um, what about for multifamily? Is there any profit model in this for them? So let's say a lot of our clients have two bedroom, one bass, or mm -hmm. three bedroom, two bass. There's not a lot of converting that you can do for a variety of reasons, probably just not enough space in an apartment, or uh, maybe if you are trying to do this permitted, you know, code isn't going to allow you to chop up walls in such a small area in an apartment. So is, is there any model for pad split in those types of units? Very, very much so. And I think that's the beauty of being a digital platform. Like entrepreneurs are finding a way to leverage our platform to benefit their business. And the, the interesting change in the multifamily model for a lot of people is that they were struggling with occupancy. So in the multifamily worlds, if you're looking at, especially B class, um, you know, B minus multifamilies, they may be running 60% occupancy, which is a huge problem because the, of the way that their valuation is set up. So if it's a cap rate and you're driven by occupancy and revenue, one of the strategies that, that a lot of multifamily that are finding our space, what they're doing is they'll designate one building as co-living. So your two ones, your three twos, now all of a sudden you're renting by the room and essentially all you did was put a lock on the individual door and the front door. And they're removing a third of their assets um, and they utilize our platform for occupancy and revenue. And then it, what happens is it, it boosts their occupancy across the other two buildings that they may have that they're renting traditionally. So they're, they're using a hybrid approach where they're saying, hey, I can go ahead and generate revenue at an inflated rate in building one if I use co-living. It's essentially what large LIHTC projects have, right? I'm going to designate 10% of housing for affordable housing. Well, they're retrofitting that using our model for existing buildings. Um, and, and that's essentially the value that that multifamilies are utilizing our platform for. So I don't know how well you know our South Florida market just off the top of your head because you work in so many metro markets. But let's say the average 2-1 here in South Florida gets you about $1,800 in, in gross rent. Um, mm -hmm. Typically, tenant pays the utilities. Um, could you give some type of just off the cuff estimated model for what type of revenue if, if um, we turned over a unit? Um, to you to do, or a client of ours did, uh, on, to the pad split model, what would that look like? Um, how single? much would room be rented? How much would the gross revenue be? Et cetera. For single or multi? Uh, Multi-family, two bedroom, one bath apartments. Let's say you had a triplex, three, yeah. two ones. You decided, yeah. I want to, I, I just want to do one of these two ones on pad split because the other two, I think I want to keep long-term tenant, but tenants, but let me test this out. Let me try one of my two one units. What does that look like? Got it. So uh, I'll give you the comparison. For mm -hmm. multifamily, our juice is made in adding revenue streams in, in into the actual asset. So that's why four bedrooms converting to six or seven, um, that makes a lot of sense. Okay. For multifamily, it's more about stop the bleed more than anything else because it's hard for me to add in two, three bedrooms to maximize the revenue model in a multifamily. Sure. But what it does is it allows you to stabilize occupancy and revenue collection for multifamilies. Got it. Because um, you're not going to be able to add in twice as many bedrooms into a multifamily. But what you end up doing is you open the aperture and lens for people that are renting in that physical asset. So for a 2-1, two, 2-2, two, two, uh, or 3-2, instead of it being $1,500, $1,800 of, of regular rent that is 60% occupied, now it's $1,000 for each bedroom. So if you have three bedrooms, now you're generating gross top line of $3,000 for the same asset. Um, and your occupancy is about 85 to 90% filled. So it's limited in, top, in terms of like top line um, revenue for multifamily. And that's why the model makes a lot more sense on the single family side, because you're essentially doubling the number of bedrooms, which is the commodity we trade in. Um, to generate more revenue. So it's a tool for multifamily. You're not going to see the same yields that you would in a single family acquire correctly, but it's just a different way of getting revenue the way 
that you know you're trying to to capture more steady revenue and reduce your occupancy rates. Yeah, I could definitely see this becoming more important uh, if we are truly moving towards a a little more towards a recessionary economy. We're seeing some signs of that. I mean, there's some you know we can, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole of whether we should <laughs> or not. But uh, uh, one thing that Larry and I, who we both own multifamily, can attest to is that we are seeing a bit of softening, um, mm -hmm. not just in the rents, but also in how long it takes to find tenants. So if that, you know, sort of vac vacancy rate starts to, to creep up a bit, this might be the perfect opportunity for something like that, where again, let's say you own a triplex, you may say, I'm having a hard time renting, you know, the, these properties out. Yeah, I have two tenants in here, but maybe I'm going to um, use pad split for one of those units. And uh, because I'm sure there is a much higher demand for uh, room rental, especially when the economy is taking a hit, um, people yeah. just can't afford it. So I, I agree. I, I think the that demographic of I need safe, affordable housing less than twelve hundred dollars a month. That demo is only going to grow. Yes. We know that, right? And the thing that's really interesting sure. is um, because when we saw interest rates rise at at eight percent and rents follow accordingly, you saw a natural compression. So. The buyers of SFRs at 300 to 250 to 300 compressed down. And now they're renting, you know, three twos for their family at 2,500, right? Because they could qualify. And then the, it just compressed everybody down one level or one strata. Um, and I don't think that's going to change, you know, and this is just, you know, what we're witnessing, I guess, across the board. The new that's normal. why. Yeah. 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 And I think that's going to be like that for, you know, the, the foreseeable future. That's where the traditional method for pad split, buying an SFR or single family rental, converting it to a pad split model, you're essentially making a multifamily from a revenue stream perspective out of a single family asset. And you can leverage all the benefits of a single family asset, but you're getting, you're unlocking multiple streams of revenue in, in a pad split model in a house where it's six, seven bedrooms. So let's say it's an eight bedroom house, but you only have six bedrooms filled there's never zero occupancy in this house. And I think these are like the little hidden gems of what our platform is, is that somebody in room seven and room eight may move out, but rooms one through five are still paying their rent. So you don't have zero revenue months. Mm -hmm. So we've, we've, you know, we've interacted, and Jaron, I'm sure you've been involved in this too, um, with, you know, owners that, rent by per, per room, right? Whether it's multifamily, large multifamilies and, and, or just, um, just single family homes. Um, I sold, sold a home to, uh, someone that Jaron and I both know, um, they, they had, they had eight, they built it out. They had eight rooms basically mm -hmm. set up in there and they were doing it themselves, right? They mm -hmm. weren't using a pad split model. They were just doing this. Um, and my recommendation to the buyer was like, Hey man, like you're, you're collecting eight G's a month on, on a, I don't know, a $550,000 purchase price, like that's mm -hmm. a awesome return. Um, especially when I think at that moment he was, we were borrowing at like four and a half, five and a half, somewhere in that space. Like, this is amazing. So, um, so, and, and he made the decision to, he regrets this to this day. He, he was like, no, I'm going to get in trouble, whatever. I, I like, I, I want to just, I just want a clean, simple execution. I'm going to change it all back. Mm -hmm. So he changed it all back. And now he's just like, oh my God, what did I do? Because <laughs> so, I told him from the beginning, I'm like, just, you're buying an investment property. There's eight people in this thing. It's working well. Take the manager that's currently managing, managing it. Just, just let him do his thing. If it blows up, okay, then go ahead and, you know, move it back to what you want it to be. But so anyway, I guess my, I guess my commentary on that is, you know, they do this, uh, they were doing this or these investors we we've, we've uh, interacted with in the past they do this without pad split what is the difference from an operational side scalability okay that's essentially the biggest thing so our platform is digital um, and we essentially provide three primary values to you the end investor the first and most important is we fill rooms because we're a two-sided marketplace, like the, the short-term rental people would know this term. It's an, we're an OTA. So an online travel agent essentially is it's we book the rooms. Because we're a two-sided marketplace, we spend, you know, million dollars a month on um, oh, well, maybe not. It's like fifty thousand dollars per market that we're in. It's pretty close. So essentially, we're spending half a million dollars a month aggregating members 
and letting members know, hey, we exist as a marketplace. So if you Google search a rent by the room in Tampa, we're, we're going to be the first SEO search that's out there. And then we aggregate across all these other listing platforms, whether it's Zumper or Roomies or you know, even Zillow, where people are looking for rent by the room or you know, shared housing. Um, we're the first place that they go to and find. So we, we literally aggregate the demand or the revenue side. And then we allow on the supply side, you know, Jaron, the, the investor, his property is listed on our platform. And those rules are no different than Airbnb. And that's the thing that I just have to stress to anybody that's watching. Your pictures matter, right? So it's like, I, I joke that it's the tinderification of rental. If your picture looks like this, but I get there and it looks like this, that person doesn't want to live there. But if you're staged properly, it looks really well because that's the number one thing people see is location. And then they go right to the pictures. If you, to, to your person's point, I spent $500,000 on this asset. And then I refused to pay $250 for professional photos. I'm like, why, 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 why are you doing that? The folks that, that uh, come from a hospitality short-term rental background, when they come to our platform, they are slaying. They're killing it because they understand the mechanism in which people are renting rooms and they're thriving. Non-sophisticated investors that just kind of said, hey, the PL said that I'm going to make this much money. I'm going to cut costs as much as I can to get there. They're the ones complaining about occupancy and, and, and room fills because they're, they don't realize it's a competitive marketplace where the person next to you, same price point, but everything visually looks amazing. And that's what the members are, are booking. So we, the three pillars, we, we fill your rooms. We fill them really quickly. Seven days for the first booking, 21 days to, to get to 80% occupancy. By 60 days, you're essentially 100% filled. Um, and the churn in room five, room six, or whatever, maybe because somebody moves into a pad split, they're like, whoa, I'm sharing a bathroom with two other people. I didn't, that's not what I thought I was going to get into. So that person may, may opt to move out at the end of 30 days. But then we fill the room again in seven days, and then we continue on with the revenue model. Secondary big thing that we do is we do all the collections. So at, to become a member on our pad split platform, you go through a background check, you go through an income verification. So everybody has the same essential background um, qualifications. That person um, pays their rent digitally. We collect all the revenue digitally. We pay out to the individual investors. And then the third major thing is that because we're a digital platform, everybody's got either an app or they've got the desktop model where communication is key. So we understand that there's eight moving parts in a house. Somebody's got to listen to what's going on. We triage all of the, the member uh, tickets for maintenance for you know member to member issues or, hey, this, this house has a leaky toilet. Um, that's really important. We communicate with third party property managers. So Larry, you would hire Jaren's PM company to manage your asset and to your friend that you had eight bedrooms. If he wants to scale, he doesn't want to listen to eight people complaining about noise or complaining about somebody stole my peanut butter. That's what the third party property managers who understand co-living, that's where they thrive is that it is the, the operating business that sits inside the four walls. And that's where the long-term revenue is made. Is because they treat it like a hospitality business. They're responsive. Uh, their response time is really fast. And then the member who's in there feels valued. So they continue to stay. Talk to me about the management piece. So obviously the communication, it's like, it's, I, I own some Airbnb. So it's like, it's, it's like the Airbnb thing model, right? Mm -hmm. They communicate through there. You, you respond very quickly. And so everything's kind of done within the platform. Money's collected within the platform. Communications done within the platform. And so the person that's managing it, do you guys offer management services or is that the the um, the owner's responsibility to figure out the management piece? Part of our mission to scale, we had to create our own property management firm. And then over the last two years, we spun that out. It's a sister company. It's called Two Keys. Um, and all they've ever done is manage co-living properties. As we've expanded into every single market, Larry, you come to me with a portfolio and you're a sophisticated investor, you have your own team. I've got my acquisition team. I've got my, my uh, property management team. I have a GC team. If you want to continue to work with those folks, by all means, but we'll go ahead and work with your property managers to train them on the nuances of being uh, in a co-living space 
if they want to take that on and create a, a separate hybrid division that does this, um, we go through and train them on this is how to uh, utilize our platform. This is how you get the most communication and value out of it. Um, and they are the ones that actually physically manage the property. Because we're a digital platform like Airbnb, we will triage anything coming inbound and then communicate to the actual operator. Um, and then it's on the operator to handle um, a clogged toilet or somebody, the AC is not working. Or in, you know, in the case of what we're just dealing with now, I have a hole in my roof because a, a hurricane just went through, right? So like we have the ability to triage problems really quickly. And then it's, that's where the value of your third party property manager really makes hay is that how responsive are they? And then how do they treat the members in the house? And that member is like, hey, I feel valued. So they continue to stay even through any issues that they have. So, so, so you guys are still, so can the operator just communicate directly or is there still going to be someone inserted in between that? No, no, no. You always have direct communication. But okay. what essentially happens is if, Larry, you're a member in room two and something comes up, you will submit a ticket and that automatically gets a, a triage response from our customer service team. They're 24 seven on the member side. And then it's forwarded to the property managers on their dashboard. And then the clock starts ticking. One of the things that was really valuable for us was not all PMs are created equal. I think, you know, anybody who's a, a, an investor understands that. And then yes. unfortunately the observation is that there's diminishing returns on size. You show me a property manager that can scale like this and then increase their customer service. And I want a unicorn, you know, I want to marry that person. It, but in reality, the ones that get it, um, they triage tickets really quickly and then they respond. And I think that's the one thing that is so beautiful is like people just want to be heard. I know that it's going to take three days for an HVAC person to come in July in, in South Florida. That's just the nature of it. But for God's sake, respond to me and let me know that the person's coming on Tuesday. Um, and then we'll suffer through. The, the great PMs will drop off fans or, or something to mitigate some of the uncomfortableness. But those are the ones that, that do really, really well on our platform is that they treat the members the way that they would want to be treated. Got it. Okay, cool. So that's that's pretty neat. So it is almost like an Airbnb model where you have your own Airbnb manager uh, yeah. handling things. You're seeing the communication in the system. They can respond uh, quickly. Even if there's a ticket, they can respond to that quickly as well. That's cool. That's Absolutely. Cool. And I think that the Airbnb, I like talking to Airbnb hosts. So Larry, you and I would like this because at the end of the day, you're the only group that looks at my model as less work. Right. So it's, it's the, the, the operational side of it, the two big values for Airbnb hosts is that if you are facing legislative change, Phoenix is a perfect example of this. Dallas is going through the same thing, right? There's fear that they're going to get rid of all Airbnbs. Atlanta is also suffering from the same thing. Those investors that are low risk tolerance, they'll convert their properties to a pad split because of the way our, our uh, rental agreements go. It's minimum 30 days on the front side, and then it's week over week renewals. So it's that next. Yeah. So okay. we get over the the barriers that are short term rental restrictions. Um, so those investors where their properties make sense in the right neighborhood, um, they will convert. Um, and it's a really simple conversion for them because they have all the furniture. They have all the photographs. They know how to do these things. The two values that I give you are. Instead of one house trying to get rented and you have to go through third parties like Guestly or Hospitable or somebody else to try to fill your room, we handle the, the room fill and the revenue you know, collection or aggregation for that, meaning that like we will find members to fill your room really quickly. The second part is your operating costs go down significantly because on a normal Airbnb, it's $250 to clean a house. In our model, it's significantly less because we're only cleaning common spaces on a minimum monthly, suggested bi-monthly um, for kitchens and living areas if there's a common space area and and bathrooms. If Got it. So you have a cleaning person come through twice a month on oh, is the recommended best practice for the manager yeah. To, yeah. to have that happening. Okay. That's interesting. And there's a nuanced reason why, which people don't understand until they get there. So- seven rooms in a house, you have one room left and you clean your room, your house once a month. So it's on the first of the month that you clean that room. If the person doesn't move in until the 21st of the month, their number one complaint is, oh, the house is dirty. 
we're like, wait a minute. No, it's not. You know, like it, it's, it's cleaned on a monthly basis. And that's why I suggest twice a month for larger houses is because your first initial impression, your bedroom might be pristine, but they're walking through common space areas. They're like, oh, the kitchen's got a whole bunch of dishes and the bathroom's a mess. The house is quote unquote dirty. And then everything past that um, is I'm looking for reasons to complain. So the best operators, they have to do some education for members coming inbound. We educate um, new members coming inbound. They get it. The, the cra craziest stat is if I come in as a member, so Jaron gave me a, a referral. Hey, we have a room opening up in, in the same house. It's really close to where we both work. Come on and move in. Um, the member gets a referral fee. The house gets filled quicker. And that person knows what they're walking into. That person will stay three times as long unless it was Larry that came in off of a Google search. And he's like, what the hell's going on? Why are there so many people here? Blah, 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 blah. So that discrepancy is huge. But and we're working on just better educating and setting expectations for all members. But essentially, if you know what you're getting into um, and you're not, it's not an Airbnb, right? It's not a, 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 a weekly motel. Those people thrive because they their expectations are here. The reality is here. That space is so, you know, that space for resentment is so much less that they they just thrive in, in our marketplace and in the rooms that they rent. Um, so that that's essentially a huge thing for us is that organic referrals are the bread and butter for for our growth. It's because people know what they're getting into. Oh.